Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for joining me today. As always, it's such a pleasure and a privilege to be able to come and just spend some quality time with you. So I hope you're feeling well and I hope life's going okay. If not, well, we're going to send you a big hug and hopefully just spend a bit of time and um, let the love of the craft family just make you feel a little bit better. Now, I've got a lovely project to do today. Well, I think it's lovely and I'm hoping you'll enjoy making it as well. But before I want to show you that, I'm just going to turn it over because quite a few of you have asked about Eric. So Eric's my black Labrador and he sits under my craft table when I'm crafting. And every time I do a video, he's in here and he's in here today. But a few of you have asked what he looks like. So I thought if, if I bring my phone in, although we may get a, a bit of a glare. So I'm hoping you can see that. I'm not sure if you can. I think there's a bit of a, a glare because of one camera to another, but I'm hoping you got a bit of a bit of a view there of Eric, my black lab. I'm not clever enough to take the, um, I'll just get rid of that. So um, I'm not clever enough to take this and actually turn it round so you can see him sat on the floor. So as I say, this is what we're going to have a play at today. And I've got to be honest, I love creating sort of 3D looking pages. Now this is stuck here, but this here is all flat. So we've got the, the word, the sentiment sticker stuck on, but this here, this is flat. And, and I just love creating these. I think they're so much fun. And the new sticker stencils are ideal for this. So just perfect for somebody like me who likes to play. And when I was looking for this, I chose some colours of ink pads that go together. So we're going to be using our elements. Now, quite a lot of you have asked really about the elements ink pads. And the best way of describing them is they are a dye-based ink. So they move with water, but they're great. You can stamp with them. Obviously, you don't get a crisp image as you would with Versafine Claire, but you, you do get an image which is beautiful. And if you're after that type of almost watery type image, and again, you can spritz them, you can make watercolour effects, lots of things. We use them a lot on the gel press because they've got a high pigment, less water content, so they're great for the gel press. But they're also good for distressing, for blending, for everything that you would use ink pads for. So I'm going to use Della Blue and that for me goes beautifully with Violet Chalk. I use these two a lot together, but also grey, the graphite. Now, a few of you have asked which colours you would buy if you were starting off. And I know you wouldn't always think of adding a grey, but to me, graphite is one colour I couldn't live without. And you can always do monochromatic cards just in grey. So it's a lovely colour. I do urge if you haven't got the graphite, I use that so much. We're going to be popping in with a little bit of sun dance as well. So I've got those there ready. This is the design, and hopefully, we're going to do with something very similar, she says. <laughs> what we're going to do first is I just want to put, I've got a piece of um multifarious card here, and this one's seven inches square. And I'm just going to put my Sharpie line round before we start. Now, I know our Eileen is ever so good and does hers at the end, but I'm afraid I'm just not as good as you and I have to do mine at the beginning because the odd time I've done mine at the end, I'm not brave. It, it whizzes and spoils my design. But again, we're all different, aren't we? So, just adding this. And I know some people can actually hold the card up in the air and run the pen along again perfect if that works for you i'm afraid i've tried all these things and this is the only one that i'm successful at so i'm sticking at what works and i shall just move that and what we're going to use are these beautiful lavinia sticker stencils now you get a pack of four and um, I've used the leaf when we did our journaling page and thank you for those of you that joined me for that and I also did a page with the heart and that that is beautiful and that's going to be so useful 
again anniversaries valentines but it's great even just to make a background and it works well with the stencil we've got with the hearts that the one whose name escapes me but also we've got two birds look and this is the one i'm going to be using now as you can see I've used this one already. Now they do stick again and again and again. But if the tack ever was to get so it wasn't tacky, you can just clean them in warm soapy water and then just let them dry naturally with the, the tacky side up and they'll be as good as new. Now I'm actually going to be stamping across mine in Versafine Clair ink, which is a permanent ink. Now as you can see, it will slightly discolour my stencil. But I'm happy with that and you know what if I can live with that I'm sure you can you know what I'm like I like everything clean now obviously there's an inner and an outer with this and we're going to use the outer and I find the best way for me to get it off the carrier is to do that and just be careful around the tail and the feet you just want to peel it off carefully And obviously keep your carrier sheet to pop it back on. Now with this, I may just put my head over. And in fact, I'm going to stand up. Not that you can see that. But I want it in the middle. And often with these things, to keep them straight, if you just let the middle flop, when you get it where you want it, just let the middle flop. And it should go down so it looks. We'll go for that. And again, look at that. As I say, I've used this three times already and there's no problem with sticking it down. And what we're going to do is we're just, the idea I had was just to build up the layers gently. So I've got my kitchen towel here for when I'm leaning. And we'll start with the Della Blue. So I'm starting with my palest ink first and I'm going to use my larger brush for this. And again, I always dab some off in the lid. And what we're going to do is I want to build the corners up and the blue is my lightest colour. So I'm going to start in the corner and just put some ink and then just come up the side and the blue's the first of my colour that's going on here. Again, in the corner, because that's where I want it darker. And then just along to about maybe two thirds of the way. And I'm just mindful to catch that edge. And do that nice blend. There we go. Don't worry too much, we're going to be adding some purple to this. So don't over tax yourself with having it perfect. Again, onto the, the stencil first and flicking in the corner. The corner's where I want it deeper. And then I'm just going to flick up the side, say about two thirds again. We need a bit more ink. And the same with this one. Give myself a nice edge there. The brushes are just perfect for this. I have to say stencils and brushes. Oh, I'm a happy bunny. Right. I'm just going to turn that round. So we're just building and you know I have a thing about opposite corners. I'm hoping you can see that. So what we're going to do now, just add a little bit of colour to our bird. And again, I'm just going to start and sort of flick round the edge, nice and lightly. And this is just going to give me a base. I'm going to leave the beak because I'm going to add some yellow to that. So I'm just going to give a nice base. A nice blue base because to be honest when I first did this I wasn't sure where I was going to add my colours so I just left the whole thing blue to start off with a little blue bird that was in a, a film wasn't it was it a song there's definitely something with blue birds isn't there so what we'll do now is bring our purple in our violet chalk and again 
got another lovely brush. Now this is a very juicy colour and you'll know your own ink pads. I've used my Della Blue so much that it, it's um, it's not as juicy as it was. I think it must be, considering blue isn't one of my go-to colours, um, I use that so much. Now this, the Violet Chalk is still a very juicy colour. So I'm actually going to put some on my stencil here. And then I'm going to take some off in the corner. Yeah, that's okay. And just build up some colour now. But I don't want to go. I want my blue to be further. So I'm not going to take my purple as far down. A bit gently. So I'm concentrating more in the corner. And I'll turn it round. And in fact, I can just pick that up and we'll flick that in that corner. Might as well use that ink. And again, I don't want to go as far. And I want my corners to match. That one's a bit deeper, so we can just add a little bit more. And if I turn that round and see how that's looking. Yeah, that's looking lovely. This is probably just needs a little bit. It's not as deep. So I'll pick that up and just flick that. Right, now we'll add some purple on the tail. So again, I'm going to flick. And again, work with the way. I almost want to get... The way you use your brush, and you'll find this, the more you use your stencils and your brushes, you can almost get... If I bring it up to show you, can you see I've almost got a line here? And it almost will help with the illusion that there's feathers there. And that's purely because I'm flicking my brush that way. And then I'm going to flick up here. I'm just going to pinch my brush a little. Tiny bit more. Don't want to spoil it now though. So I just want the purple in the middle bit. Yeah, I'm going to leave that there. Can always come back if I decide I want a little bit more. So we're in with the graphite now, and I've come in with the dinky little brush, the number three, and this is perfect for this. So again, into the lid, and I just want to emphasize this corner. So I'm going to just emphasize the corner and again flick away into the corner. And the same with this one. Can you see, if I show you, can you see the difference of how that corner is emphasised compared with that one? What a difference this grey really makes. So again, onto the mask, just up each side a little and flick. And that really just emphasises those corners. So I'm happy with that. Now into the bird. Well, going to give him some grey on his legs. So we'll come in with the graphite and we'll just stop it there. And again, if anybody's going to say to me what type of bird is this, it doesn't matter. It's my art bird. If you want to do one specific colours, by all means, you go ahead. Um, but for me, I was just going arty. I think in my head, I almost think it looks like a black bird, but it had as I say, for me, it's no specific, but obviously you can do specific colours if you want. Now, I'm just going to give him a bit of grey on his chest. And if I come down from the beat look and flick that way, it almost helps that, makes it look like his beak and then his head there. So just by shading with your brush, you can just get... And then what we'll do is we'll just add a little bit there. So it almost looks like he's got... You see how his shape's building up now? And then I'm going to come in with the Sundance. Now again, this is very juicy, so I have to be mindful for this. And I'm going to add a little bit to his beak. And I want to overcook it there. And then I want a little bit just on his head here. 
just as though the sun's just catching the top. And then a little bit on his feet. And again, because I've done them grey, you won't really see this, but I don't know it's there and it just warms that grey up a bit, gives it a bit more of a tone. I think I just want to add a little bit more. If ever you're not sure, one lady the other day messaged me and asked and she said, when do I know when to stop? So for me, here, I'm not sure if I need any more yellow. So what I would do is hold it at arm's length and that's not going to help you. But if I stand up and look down my camera, I, I get a better view. And yes, from a, a distance, I think I just need a bit more yellow. I don't want to spoil it. Good job I put that on there. Look, look how much was on there. Just catching his back and his head. Just gently, gently. Yeah, right, I'm happy with that. So often, and if you're not sure, sometimes I take a photograph on my phone and then look at the photograph and that gives me an idea. While I've got the yellow on my brush, I just want to bring a little bit on these opposite corners. Just to su be a suggestion, almost to highlight these opposite corners. And again, I'm just brushing gingerly off the sticker stencil. There we go. Now, do be aware that any ink left on here takes a while to dry. It always dries slower. So I'm just going to see if I can mop a little bit up. Yeah, just to save me putting it on my work. Now, you could leave it like that if you wanted. But what we're going to do is, with our fine liner, just going to draw a line round the stencil. Now, again, for me... If there's one bit where it's going to go wrong, I know we've got a ridge and it should be easy, but I don't know about you often, it's not all that difficult bits that go wrong, it's the easy bit. And I think sometimes it's because we rush it, because we think it's easy. Well, I don't know if that's just the way my head works, but... So I'm very slowly and carefully, because I don't want to spoil it at this point. And I don't think that first bit caught as much, did it? There we go. And then I'm going to go around the bird as well. So again, deep breath and just take your time and just feel the shape. Now I find this easier than taking the stencil off. Now, I hope you're holding your breath, because believe you me, I am. Eric is as well. Don't worry, mate, you can breathe again in a minute. If it helps, just rest your hand and then come back. Do a little bit more. There we go. Whew. Now, like I say, you could leave it like this. But I just wanted to add a little bit of stamping, just to add a bit more interest to the design. But like I say, my biggest thing here to bear in mind is we're using VersaFine Clair Permanent Ink, but it will stay wet longer on the stencil, so we don't want to smudge it. And before I started, we're going to use the snow shrub. But when I couldn't decide which stamp to use, I got my acetate and the first thing I did was placed it on the bird and decided that I liked the look of that. I wanted some foliage, but I didn't want it too fussy. Originally, I was going to use the script stamp, the Sacred Spells, I love that. So that's another alternative. But I thought I'd do something different, so we'd go for this lovely snow shrub. But again, you could have great fun using different stamps and deciding which one you like the best. And it can be a little bit slippy because you've got the stencil here. So I'm just going to 
You almost want that to go across where his eye would be. Right, down we go. And like I say, it can be a little bit slippy because we're on the stencil. And also you may have, a, well, you will have a slight ridge between the stencil and the card. So make sure you give a good press. And then lift up, but that is stamped beautifully. I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to add two more in the corners. And we'll just come, if I get, I want this in on it. So if I just do this bottom corner first. And again, I'm mindful here, a little bit extra pressure there because we've got a ridge. And then straight up. And I'm going to turn it round. Ink up again. I do think you could turn this into a Christmas card design, you know. And I just want these branches to join up. So put that there. And I'm thinking this would be beautiful. Maybe change the colours up because, of course, this could be a robin. I mean, imagine in reds and greens, this. Well, it doesn't have to be traditional reds and greens, does it? You could use your purples. What colour are you having this year for your Christmas? Do you have a theme? Now, this hasn't quite caught here, but that's fine because I'll use my fine liner. I'm really not worried about that. We'll stamp this corner. Because I was busy talking, it didn't press hard enough. So we'll do it the same way. So we'll do with the one across the top first. Don't want it symmetrical, but I want it to look sort of symmetrical. It doesn't have to be exactly, but if it follows the same sort of pattern, it will just look better, be more pleasing to the eye. So this one, I need to remember to press there, don't I? Lift that up. See the difference? I remembered to press along that edge, whereas there I was talking and forgot. But it doesn't matter because I'll show you how we get round it. And then join this one up there. on a good press there there we go and that one stamped beautifully look so it shows you the difference of when you're talking and not concentrating but what I'm going to do is just blot it before I do anything else because I really don't want to smudge this and I don't want to use my heat tool because I've got my stencil on there I don't know if the heat would damage it, but just in case. I do think it's worth taking your time. Like I say, I'm so excited. I love to do designs like this and then think of all the different ways I can mix it up. Now, just as a matter of interest, look there. I've had some messages off ladies saying, you know, you really do um, blot a lot. Is it really necessary? Well, for me, especially on here, that shows you why. So let's just use our fine liner. And because I'm leaving this in place, look. I can see exactly where. And again, just take your time. This one here. I'm 
So should we take this off? What do you think? I love this bit. Well, I say I love this bit. It's quite nerve wracking. Again, do check. Check that your hands are clean. And I find it easy. It sticks so well. If I just slightly bend my card, look. And very carefully. Again, being mindful round his little feet. And there we go. I just think that's lovely. Now, just to show you the stencil, I'm going to put back. Well, in fact, what before I put it back, I've got a, a non-stick craft mat here. And what's probably better is if I pop it on there and then I've got a tissue with some water and I'm just going to wipe it, look, very carefully, go carefully around the feet. See, if I put it on my non-stick craft mat, I know it won't take any of the sticky off. And I don't want to use a solvent to take off that bit of ink. But like I say, that little bit that's left isn't a problem. And I can just use my inky binky and dry again, careful around all the... All his little nooks and crannies, his beak and his feet. Make sure he's dry. And then, as I say, peels off beautifully because it's my non-stick craft mat. And then I can put this back on here and I've not rubbed any ink on there. So I've not got any ink on here. It sticks beautifully and it's ready to use next time. So a couple of finishing tricks. Let's add a sentiment. Now I must admit I do need to go and get some new sentiments because, oh let's go be kind. As you can see I'm nearly at the end of this sheet and as always I just want my scissors and I'm just thinking he can perch on that and just so I get it straight Again, if I pop the end under my scissors and then stick it down and tie the whole thing together because we've got the black lines let's just add a black line around and again my head might come in shot and look that's beautiful he's perched beautifully on our be kind Now, just add some little white highlights. Now, I just need a, a scrap of card to check my pen's working. I have two of these. One works better than the other. There we go. And I'm not going to add the white highlights to all of it. Just... Just every so often. Now again, I'm thinking again, if it was Christmas, you could add snow. Glossy accents would look lovely. Maybe just a little bit here. A few on here, just along there. I don't want to overcook it, but I think it just looks better with and then in this top corner now I'm gonna turn mine round. Only because I don't want to lean on my work. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with a splat or a black mark where I don't want it. And I just love this effect so much, I really don't want to spoil it. I mean, I know it's only a piece of card, but I love it when I'm happy with something, don't you? I think that feeling of, of pride and being happy. Put a bit more down there. And if you notice, the yellow just gives that little, definitely adds something there. So 
what I'm going to do is I've got a mat and layer for it. So this would be an eight by eight card blank. And then I'm just going to add, now at this point you could add some white Posca splats if you wanted, but I'm going to add just a little bit of violet chalk. So I've got my fan brush. It's in my pot. I want to overdo this, but I just want to add a few, and I want it on the backing card as well, and a few here. And then I'm just going to clean my brush and just add a few of water just into where we've blended the ink. I'll mop that up. And I'll just bring that in the middle so you can see it. And obviously I'll stick this down when it's, when it's dry. But how lovely is that? And again, it wasn't difficult. Now I could add some charcoal shading if I wanted here to make it look even more 3D, but I actually like the white. I just love the black frame, you know, with the uh, fine liner and then against the white. So I'm, I'm going to leave that one there. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you have a go at this. Have you got the new sticker stencils? I'd love to see what you come up with and maybe use a different stamp. And let's have a look, see what different stamps look like. And maybe you're going to have a go at that Christmas design. What do you think? I hope you do. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. It's so lovely catching up and just having a bit of a play and seeing how things work out. So, until next week, let me just see if I can get the two together. May not be able to because obviously they're quite big designs. So we might just have to push him along a bit, put that there. Maybe just stick that under there a bit. So, you take care everybody. Much love and hugs from me. And thanks for all your messages and all your support. Honestly, you're a great group on here. Bye for now.